Hello everyone, Happy New Year. It's nice to be back with all of you. I hope that you enjoyed your holidays. Uh, I Unfortunately, uh, the recording that we did for the Emerald Fire meeting this past Sunday where we really focused a lot on Australia uh, did not record. Uh, but I wanted to just extend again um, my empathy to all of you there. I'm able to and I will teach others how to, um, I forget what it's called, what the term is called when we, you're able to like send yourself somewhere else uh, and going into, going to Australia, the, it's so oppressive there right now that I can't even, I can do it for a few seconds and then I have to, to leave. Uh, so I would just, you know, encourage everyone, I'm sure that you are, but, you know, to keep sending love, loving energy to everyone in Australia. And that doesn't, you don't have to do that directly from yourself. You can ask the creator to do that, ask the angels just to lend support to all of the people who are there right now. And of course the animals. So I just wanted you to know that, you know, my heart is with you. And um, I'm always sending love and energy and envisioning the rain and the Emerald Fire meetings that we do. The first meeting that we had was November 11th of 2018 and weeks after. And I was asked, the one and only time I was asked to send a wave of energy through the earth. I don't remember what the ray was, but we did that work. And then weeks later, it was reported that there was a wave that went, um, I think it was from the coast of France and then through the entire earth. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> we did that. So um, it's really powerful work. And I appreciate all of you who dedicate an hour or so a month to doing that work with me. So um, yeah, so let's talk about what is going on with this new, or sorry, full moon eclipse that we have in Cancer. We have so many huge things happening in the astrology this week. Um, you know, Uranus, we have this full moon coming on the 10th, and that will be at 7.21 p.m. London time, so 1.21 in the United States for Central Time. And I'm sorry, I apologize, but I did not write down Sydney. Uh, but... We have that on the 10th, and at the time of the eclipse, Uranus will already be stationary. He has been retrograde for about six months or so, and he will move forward. Um, as he moves forward, then the Pluto and Saturn conjunction will come to its perfection on the 12th they will be at 20, that will happen at 23 degrees of Capricorn, uh, pretty much opposite the degree of the full moon that we have in Cancer. And whenever we have full moons, those are when things are illuminated for us. Some light is shown to some situation where maybe we were a little foggy about what was going on. Uh, but this eclipse has some really interesting energy, very serious energy, playing out. Uh, and so this is a big week for all of us. A turning point is what Metatron is saying. And the energies of eclipses I see, I hear people all the time, you know, give a, a time, you know, like how many months will go by while these energies play out. They pretty much set the stage until the next period of eclipses. Uh, the next one that comes on July 5th is on the United States sun. So, um, obviously, because 4th of July, that's where our sun is. So, uh, big things. And then this, the one that we're having now, the lunar eclipse that we're having now is in the sign of our sun in Cancer. So, and we know that, you know, like we've been talking about with the Saturn, Pluto, South Node, all, and, you know, Jupiter debilitated there with the South Node in Capricorn, that that whenever the South Node is involved, then it's typically like a lower energy that we're dealing with. When we talk about light and shadow, 
uh, I mean, the south node in your chart is something that you've perfected, but now you're coming here to show that you've perfected. And we always look at that for healing sessions, this, where the south node is in the natal chart. And, you know, Capricorn is in its lower form. It is the authority figure and it brings us structure and, um, you know, it's very stable energy. It's an energy of am high ambition where you reach like the pinnacle and you're able to create a, a legacy for yourself on the planet. And um, with the South Node, that's where we come into the dictator. And when we're looking at the Saturn and Pluto conjunction, you know, going on right now with Pluto uh, in, in the South Node mixed in, that's like dirty secrets. Um, you know, Jupiter as well, that's like dirty politics. And so I think we've seen already in this past week, uh, you know, someone who is worried about losing their grip on power, um, you know, go into a sovereign nation and execute someone. And there that comes back to us. You know, there's always give and take and everything. Energy is always in a flow and there will be something to, to answer to for that. So we'll see how all of that plays out. And I said during the Emerald Fire meeting uh, that I, I haven't been shown that there would be an all out war. It's, you know, I don't know how we really categorize that now when we just bomb people and we don't really call it a war, but uh, I haven't been shown that there would be an all out war. But this energy does portend a lot of anger, a lot of hostility. And when uh, with Jupiter, so close to the south node they're just within a degree or so of one another jupiter is about truth and faith and the broad vision he's the ancient ruler of pisces and he he also speaks to freedom and justice and so when he's with the south node then that it's sort of like uh, he's kind of being held hostage. You know what I'm saying? Like once he moves past that um, and once the South Node moves into Sagittarius in May, I'm not sure how much of that is going to change because Sagittarius then will, the ruler, Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius and Jupiter will be, you know, ruling that south node while he's debilitated in Capricorn. And so I'm not sure how long these energies are going to play out. You know, you could say that the eclipse goes for six months, but then a planet goes by and hits that degree, that 20, 21 degrees of Cancer, and there could be a reaction then because of the astrology that's involved. And these are the big boys, you know, we're talking about Pluto, that, you know, the ancients, Pluto is, I mean, Pluto wasn't discovered until the 50s, but Pluto was the ruler of the underworld. That's who he is named for, the god of the underworld. And then Saturn being the lord of karma, uh, Jupiter, the largest planet that we have. Um, so when we're looking at Jupiter with the south node and Mars, we're going to talk, I'm talking about the lower of energy first, you guys, and because I, I want to be honest with you. And, you know, I'm not, I just want to put this out there and we're going to talk about the higher energies too. But when you look at Jupiter there, all of them are down here in Capricorn and Jupiter looks sort of like the number four and the U is the south node. And Mars is our site. It's that's one of the things that Mars rules is our site. And so he's in Sagittarius now and he's trying to get the broader vision and he is looking to Jupiter, answering to Jupiter and they're they get along, you know, they're fire. So Sagittarius is fire. And so when he's looking to Jupiter, Jupiter is like almost blind. It's like all of us now are going through a step of blind faith where we're asked to release something to make a move to make a shift we don't know what the what it's going to look like on the other side he's showing me now um okay he's showing me uh that we're stepping off of a cliff 
okay? And he's showing me like the leg extending and of someone with a blindfold on. And as we step off, then the magic carpet, it comes. <laughs> and right under our feet, right where it knows that we're going to land. It's already there, he's saying. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's already there. Uh, plenty of you, he's saying, uh, haven't yet, have yet to see me, but you feel my presence. And we feel, you know, the creator's presence as well. And the frequency of pure, unconditional love. If you've ever done a healing session or had a channeling session, you can feel that vibration. It's not necessarily tangible. So we're all being asked now to step out in faith. And another way to look at that energy is when you see, I need to move this thing up. When you see Mars there in Sagittarius and then the green line coming up from Mars going into up to Uranus, who looks sort of like a little spaceship. It kind of looks like, um, now that I'm looking at it, it looks like uh, what the, the Empire used during the war against the freedom fighters in Star Wars. Uh, and then that smaller green line that goes from Uranus to Chiron, the wounded healer, Chiron and Aries. Chiron and Aries speaks to having to fight for your right to survive. And so, and Uranus speaks to freedom and the breaking of ties, of bonds, of whatever has been holding you back. That is an energy of freedom. That's why he is calling this Freedom's Gate. Uh, because this is really like something is going to go when Jupiter is with the South Node. Like when you have a transit of Jupiter past the South Node, you will typically lose something that you believed valuable, that you wanted, uh, that you desired. But in the end, it works out that it was better for you not to have it. And so there will be things that fall away. This is definitely like a mega eclipse energy of endings and things falling away so that we can, he's saying, go forward like an explorer and seek what it is that our heart desires. Okay. Because Mars is, uh, he is the ambassador of truth while he's in Sagittarius and he wants to be free. He needs freedom and something is holding him back here and that those energies are going to break through and bring freedom. Chiron is the wounded healer, but it's also the I am, the I am that is in inside of each of us that is somehow clouded, somehow blocked, somehow not in our consciousness because there's healing to do so that we can remember who it is that we are. You know, we're always here remembering that we're the universe, having an experience and not getting bogged down. And, and I know right now, especially if you're living in Australia, that is not an easy thing to do. But we're asked to trust he's saying, and to have faith that everyone is going to, all of us will land on our feet. And he's saying to, to reach for the stars, to see the dream that you're envisioning for your life, to be emboldened in that vision and to claim it and to start saying, thank you that I have this in my life right now, whatever this is for you. Thank you that I have a job that I find rewarding for my soul, that feeds my soul, that makes me, um, you know, want to get up in the morning and go to work. It doesn't feel like work. Thank you for that opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity that you're bringing me so that I can find financial stability in doing something that I love. Uh, thank you for bringing the right partner to me at the right time. I'm worthy and deserving of these things. So with the full moon, that's, you know, the manifestation of something that you've asked for before. Something comes to fruition. And cancer is emotion. And it's the nest. It's the safe harbor. It's the place where our heart is safe where we're nurtured and we're loved. It's like being able to let your hair down and just be yourself. And cancer, the lower cancer is that we can become, and everybody has a moon, so I'm not singling out, you know, all of the cancers there. And I have a moon ruled by cancer. So, but cancer and our moon is where 
we can have things that we know are not good for us and that we know aren't bringing us happiness, but we've become complacent because we don't want to let go. It's comfortable. We might not like it. We might not be so happy in the relationship, but it's comfortable. We know what's expected of us. And that's just sort of like this habit, this routine that we get into that we're comfortable with. And when it's time to release it, it can be really hard to let that go. And same with Pluto, you know, that's a Scorpio cancer. They sort of share those qualities of, um, you know, being resistant and letting go and not allowing ourselves to let go of things that no longer serve us. And the moon with, when you're looking at the moon, uh, in opposition to that Saturn, Pluto, Sun, Ceres, Mercury. Um, this could be a lot of habits that have to do with food, actually. Uh, looking at that because Ceres relates to diet and so does Mercury. And Mercury and the Moon both relate, relate to habits. So this could be even, you know, with Pluto and Saturn there, an addiction. Um, and I'll say for last year in 2019, when we had that that uh, Jupiter Neptune square, that really amped up addictions. And I've spoken to a lot of you, you know, who and it's just the old traditional religion thing that we should feel guilty about that. And that's gone now. We're not doing old religious stuff anymore. So it's not there's no reason to feel guilty. Um, it doesn't benefit us at all. But this is a time where you could just find that freedom in releasing that habit where it could just be he could, he's saying that it will be of no consequence like um, oh, I'm not going to share that. But uh, OK, uh, I was eating something that was really sugary uh, a while ago. And I realized like, oh, I don't really, I'm not really getting the high is what I want to say. That's what I'm thinking is high uh, from this that I usually do. Like it just didn't really, it was kind of like, eh. And so that's what he's talking about, you know. And as we come into a higher vibration, our food habits change for sure. Um, you know, some of us have it happen without our having a choice. Uh, I had that, but not with meat. I, I was happy to give up meat when I did. But that's something else. And people ask me that a lot because I'm vegan. I just, that's an individual timing thing. And it will just have, if, if it never happens, then it never happens for you. And you can't, it's not like you, I've heard, you know, somebody was asking me, uh, I think on Facebook that, you know, is it true that you can't come into your light body fully unless you're a vegetarian or vegan? And I believe that there is some truth to that, but I, it's not like you can just give up meat and then you come into your light body either. Metatron is saying that everything is done in stages and that it's not the same for everyone. Everybody has their own divine timing. And for me, I just suddenly, meat did not appeal to me. It just, it grossed me out. And I never in a million years would have thought that I would say that either. Uh, so I'm just saying that if you're meant to, if that's something that's beneficial for you, that that will come about when it's meant to. It could be with this energy that within the next six months, you decide to make a radical shift in your diet or it's easy for you to lay down a habit or maybe there's something that you're habitually doing with Mercury. It could be just the negative thinking. And Mercury, I want to mention too, is out of bounds. So he's not in the, you know, the path of the sun that's from, you know, the sor the, the solstices. The uh, the sun is at, in the, at north of the equator uh, in the solstice that comes in January or December and then south of the equator, the same number of degrees for the one that we have in June. And Mercury is out of bounds. He's past that border, that boundary. And so when that happens, um, we can have like technical problems like we had uh, for the Emerald Fire meeting. And, you know, I've known a lot of technical stuff has been going on with me. I don't know about you guys, but it's sort of like a like a Mercury retrograde is what it feels like. And that's what it reacts like. But it's also Kazemi, the sun. And Kazemi is a particularly 
mm, it's like a, a an aspect where a planet comes so close to the sun that they actually become he's saying emboldened by the sun they aren't lost in the sun combust the sun it can be like where some inspiration just comes to you like shazam and because of the way that that eclipse or that i'm sorry that saturn pluto uh sun mercury is speaking to neptune it could be in a dream it could be in a vision but that's divine inspiration you can see the moon is in that harmonious that long blue line over to neptune in Pisces and then the shorter blue line goes over to Mercury and the Sun and so that is definitely a divine inspiration information coming forward that maybe you've been looking for um, I know I know some of you are going through unexpected turbulence in, in the workplace where you know a job security has become an issue for you uh, this this energy will shift you into a career where you'll have more freedom and you'll have more equity is what he's saying. Pallas Athena, who we see here, Pallas Athena is at the gate of the gods. She's the goddess of wisdom. She's with Archangel Gabriel, exactly, his asteroid. And so they're, they're sitting at the gate of the gods at the end of Sagittarius. Also, because of that and them being answering to Jupiter, who's with the South Node and Capricorn, this could be um, something of he's talking about a legacy or something that you've inherited that you're now allowed to walk free from. Uh, myself, I've been doing some really intense uh, healings as far as things that I brought in, like when I've seen myself before I incarnated and I took on, on a lot of, I made a lot of pledges or vows. It, it There's all different terms for it. Uh, it's obligating myself to go through horrible things. And, you know, this past week there was a lot of like, listen, you know, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, and it's funny because I always react like that. And then the time comes when it's ready to be released. And I'm like, oh, why didn't I just, I should have known that that was coming. But it, you know, it's not fun. Whenever something is triggered and something's coming up to be released, it feels very uncomfortable. We feel it in our energy where we just feel like, you know, it's like an itch that we need to scratch and it needs to be released. But it, we can't ever rush that either because these things are always done with divine timing. So this is a really spectacular energy for renewal, releasing old habits, things that no longer serve you. Uh, I've, he said something to me, okay, uh, about that he wanted me to, he asked me to deliver a specific message to one of you at least, and now I'm seeing it's not just one of you, but not so many of you. The message is the time for negotiating or negotiations is is finished and it has something to do with the relationship and so I'm not sure what you know he does I don't have I don't know who it is or see you or but I do know that I feel like you're a female uh, and that this is not easy for you so if that is you know something that's being asked of you right now please just trust that whatever ends now what what replaces it will be beyond what you could have imagined better in a better way and none of us are responsible for anyone that's not true that's an ego story everyone can survive without us we're each on our own individual paths and sometimes the person that we're hanging on to can't get to where they're going because we're hanging on to them and so um you know, I'm I'm thinking of you and sending you love uh, for all of you who are releasing people who are have been important to you. And that can happen in a kind way. It doesn't have to be a lot of drama. I find it interesting uh, that Union, if you look into the third house, you see the asteroid Union and then Juno who relates to relationships she's in libra at the midpoint between them is spica which is a very fortunate star they're in the third house of the twins and i feel like with this going on if the, for those of you who've gotten the 
know that you're on the twin flame journey. I just expect that messages and connections will be made. I know a lot of stuff has been going on with me as far as twin flame activity. Um, and so be open to that and trusting, uh, maybe not in the physical, but this would usually be, you know, like unless you're already physically together, but typically uh, that is what goes on in the higher realms. And so that there's a possibility that that will be coming up as well. Um, and let me think what else I was going to say. As far as like how this is going to affect the earth changes. A full moon in Cancer of this magnitude does speak to water events or flooding of some kind. What I was shown was um, um, okay. What I was shown was mountains and like almost. I'm not going to say like the entire top of the mountain, but I definitely saw land sliding uh, from the top of the mountain. And I'm never shown like a location. And that can also just be what we're feeling. I will say that the vertex, which is like a karmic marker in the chart, is with the sun. And Capricorn is about the mountain that we climb. Uh, you know, that we're all trying to reach to do the work that we came here to do. Capricorn is the sign of the master. And this energy, with all of the Capricorn energy that we have going on, uh, is about building something for tomorrow, is what he's saying. Building something for tomorrow. Letting go of yesteryear, because Capricorn can also is the old man as well. So letting go of the past and letting it, and he's saying what whatever solutions or answers haven't come, just to let them go, and they will resolve themselves, is what he's saying. I know a lot of astrologers uh, have been posting this week on Facebook that they've closed their investments, investment accounts. Um, he's saying that that necessarily, you know, may be uh, unnecessary, but that not to be making any... Uh, questionable investments at this time. Okay, this isn't an, an energy where you want to be putting a lot of money into something. Unless it's like something like, and, and what's a lot of money, right? I'm saying like, you don't, maybe not wanting to make a, a huge purchase where you're not sure exactly what you're getting uh, because of the trickster energy of Mercury that's involved and then Saturn and Pluto conjunction, maybe not the best time to be launching uh, something that you want to have a, a long life. So, and this energy is going to play out, because this Mars-Pluto conjunction is what I'm talking about, through March. Okay, so that that I know that he's told me that a while ago. So not maybe related to the eclipse, but uh, in relation to how long that could, you know, financial things, I, I would be... I would be very careful about making a large investment or a large purchase, especially if it's something for luxury. If it isn't something of, if it's something of necessity, then yes. But if it's just a luxury item, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be a good time to be doing that. So I was going to read to you. Oh, also he wanted me to mention um, that these Saturn relates to your teeth your skeletal structure uh, and minerals, your support. So this would be a great time and always check with your doctor. Please always check with your doctor. But if you aren't taking calcium, magnesium and zinc, magnesium is perfect remedy a lot of times for depression. Ask your doctor. Uh, but that was what was recommended to me. But if there, if you could take minerals and you have to just find out for yourself, I mean, I can work with you on it in a session if you need trace minerals. But calcium, magnesium, and zinc are all things that help to boost the immune system. And then, you know, like any kind of, anytime we're having anything with teeth, that's where there's something typically financially going on where maybe we still have that lack work that we thought we were finished with. Maybe that still uh, needs to be worked on. And, um, and then what were you... 
Okay, and then, uh, you know, just being your own architect, being the beaver, building your building your future and taking the proper steps necessary. And he's talking about, like, after the period of releasing is finished. Um, and then, yeah, just working with discipline and routine. So, and with discipline and routine, I really feel like that's a lot related to diet. Diet is a huge part of self-care. You know, and we, we get so caught up in like the spiritual, like, woohoo, that we aren't taking care of the physical body and we cannot hold the vibration of the light body unless we're taking care of our physical bodies. It just, it just can't happen. So, um, yeah, that was another thing that he wanted me to mention. And I'm going to read the Omega symbol for Cancer 21. It is titled, High Up on a Mountain, an Eagle's Nest. Heritage and Birthright, the soul's inheritance, being granted a belongingness, an attunement to rarefied worlds, consciousness triumphant, maintaining the crown vista of universal essentials. You are imbued with natural wonders and treasures, wakeful, vigilant, and clear, you have superlative faculties of sifting through and finding what we all need to see here. Remarkably untouched by personal limitations and distortions, called upon to uphold the truth and knowing it. Serene, focused, and unsentimental. Diving right to the place where the goods are. Impeccable skills used under restraint. The finest accompanies each breath, the mark of previous karmic attainments of the highest kind, resuming where you left off, steady, self-assured, and righteous in the best sense, beyond reproach. So, and that's Capricorn is about integrity. And when we're talking about karma, the Lord of karma and the God of the underworld meeting up, that's definitely ending a karmic cycle. That's the end of a karmic cycle for humanity. And I know that this conjunction happens three times a century. It hasn't happened like this in Capricorn for over 400 years. It's significant. It's very significant. When they've come together before, they that was the start of World War I, other wars, um, but also other movements toward freedom that were successful, that are still going on. And so... Whatever we see now going on in the news, we're just going to keep trusting that the peace is coming and holding space for the light. Consciousness triumphant. We are setting the tone for the consciousness. Unless we give in to fear, we're setting the tone for consciousness. That's what we're doing. That's what the light brigade has landed, is what he's saying. The light brigade has landed. Our consciousness and how we see the future this is quantum physics. This isn't just some willy-nilly, you can't create your own reality. Quantum physics says, yes, you do. So the way that we see the earth and the what's going on in the world uh, is coming to a place then that will set us on the right path. And, you know, not worrying so much about, you know, what's going on in the news every day. I, it's really hard to get on Facebook these days. Um, I find I almost need to, like, I have to do an energetic shower after Facebook. So be careful with social media and the news and keep focused on high up on the mountain in the eagle's nest, taking the eagle's view, just surveying the land and saying like, wow, look at all that crazy stuff happening. Can't wait till that's over and peace reigns. So Everybody, take care of yourselves. I'm going to, I think the special is still on the website. I meant to check that before I got on uh, the Christmas special. Appreciate you guys, um, all of you who have booked with me. And if you're also sensitive stomachs are uh, coming up right now for a lot of people. I know one of my children actually is having that too. Um, and, you know, just be, if anything, in, during eclipse season, anything comes up that's weird, medically, go to the doctor or whoever you've chosen as your health professional. Uh, go and see that person so that you can have that taken care of. Eclipses, a lot of people leave. 
um, and there are a lot of health things that complications that can surface during in a time like this too. And just know that you know with Chiron and Mars and Uranus all having that conversation and there being a full moon in Cancer, if you're feeling really emotional right now, that's just what you're you're just releasing. And just let yourself have a good cry. I call in Mother Mary and do that with her. So everybody take care of yourselves. Sending all of you so much love. And I will speak to you in about a week. All right. Take care.